Um, here again in the Victron app, we can see we have produced 4.9 kilowatt hours today with our 1.2 kilowatt system pointing eastwards. Yeah, that was my maximum 5.99 on this day. Yeah, well, this is the maximum I can charge the battery with at the moment with this one uh, panel setup I have. And actually people have asked, uh, I can go back in time for three weeks here, 21 days. And it shows me still the graph of my energy production in the app. I'm sure the um, solar charge controller saves more information and can be read with other Victron devices. But this is what we have. Well, and this is exactly the topic for tonight. To recharge the battery, we need a charger, right? We need a battery charger. This has arrived today. Nice battery charger. And I thought about getting a charger for quite some time now. And if you have seen my last video, where I was talking about the bulk absorption and float settings in the Victron or in the charge controller. Um, I was very close to fully charge the battery in the afternoon and then the sun went away and it took forever to fully charge the battery. But I needed a full charge because I wanted you to show the, the um, transition over from bulk to absorption to float then with different settings. So I said, well, if I would have a grid charger uh, just a power charger to recharge the battery just a tiny little bit to get it over this hump and to charge it to 100% that would be amazing but I didn't and I said well I don't need one you know I'm charging from solar that's all and then I did some um, some uh, basic uh, did some googling and everything and, uh, and I found this one here this is a um, 48 volt 5 amp charger for lithium iron for or lithium iron batteries it comes with this RC now what is it called it's an X XRL XR this one here this is an X XLR X X XLR, XLR Canon plug is it connector XLR they are usually used for a microphone for um, studio microphone stuff and everything and so, but they use them also for e-bikes and this is an e-bike charger I bought here. Well, apparently it charges up to 50, 54.6 volts, which is uh, 3.41 per cell. I'll give this a go. It was only $35 on eBay, so. And then I had a look. Then I had a, had a look in my box with all the cables, you know. You, I'm sure every one of you has got such a box in your garage or on the attic or something full of cables and stuff you just keep, you know, and I found I found the female counterpart for that So I can really um, plug this in now together here and then we can um, with the other end we can recharge the battery with this um, charger here And you probably say well five amps this will, this will take weeks to recharge this big battery, right? Well, it will exactly take two days to recharge the battery from 0 to 100. So 50 volt and 5 amps gives you 5, 50 times 5 is... So 5 amps over 24 hours gives you roughly 120 ampere hours per day. So times 2 is in 240 ampere hours with this charger if it charges with 5 amps all the time. That's what I want to try. I said, well, for $30, you know, you just get one and try it out. I'll just need to modify this female plug here because it has like a very tiny... Yeah, look at these cables. They are so thin. That's not going to work with 5 amps. So this is just a 1.5 millimeter cable here. I've just soldered to the female part of this XRA, what was it called? XLR, XLR connection it is. And pin number one is the positive and pin number two is the negative and pin number three is not used. So only one position you get it in. Yeah, cool.
Uh, this is like a strain relief thingy here with these little claws, with these uh, plastic claws here. Okay, and then we need to put this end cap on here. And just screw this on. And that's pretty much it. And I thought on the other side I just put an XT60 connector so the uh, charger will be compatible with all my other plugs and cables I've made before. I just need to figure out if I need a male or female for that. Probably here my charging cables I have. So this is a female here on my charging cable I just made. Ah, I was wondering why I need so much solder. <sighs> Look at this piece of art. Nice. Okay, and here we have our little adapter cable made with an XLR and an XT60. <laughs> Who comes up with all these names? So this is the side coming from the charger and this is our adapter cable. And they should just fit. Yep, they click into each other. We've got the XT60 on the other side. And we will plug this into our to our to our battery clamps on the other side. Well, I must admit I haven't got a fuse in between yet. I haven't got one at the moment. I will order some from eBay. These inline fuses and put there maybe a six, seven, eight amp fuse in or something just for safety. 10 amp fuse or something, just for safety reasons, you know. All right, before we want to connect this, we want to check the polarity again. Plug this in, there's a green light. I think this is the only indicator and this one is light. It's probably, yep, it is made in China, of course. And let's quickly check the polarity and voltage so red is positive black is negative and we've got plus 54.7 so this is the no load voltage of course a little bit higher and um, well let's connect this to our battery here and see what happens i just hope there's nothing serious happening here because i don't have the fuse in between i'm a little bit skeptic connecting this device to my battery now okay let's give this a go and hope for the best we connect this quickly to our inverter battery terminals here okay so the negative is connected to the test here okay no sparks well the good thing is we've got a red light now here on the on the charger so this has changed okay let's see Three point three point eight. There we go. That's the charge current. It should be five. Yeah, it is still humming. Yeah, you can see here three amps into the battery now from this uh, charger. Let's turn off the inverter thingy here. Now it still makes this makes this weird. Ah, oh, I think there is a fan or something inside. That's why it is a little bit vibrating. Yes, there's a fan inside. All right. Ah, cool. Okay, so we are charging with uh, 3.75 amps now. <laughs> so it will definitely take longer than two days to fully charge the battery now, but that's fine, you know, and just need this to top this up a little bit, sometimes here and there. It's just good to have a uh, grid charger here in case you need one for whatever reason you know so this seems to work fine I wasn't aware that there's a fan inside we should open it it has normal Phillips bit screws little tear down hey yeah really there's a fan inside oh this is glued in all right <laughs> non-repairable 
So there's a fan inside, a little 12 volt fan. And this is the whole board. I'm not going to touch anything here because it was just connected to the grid. It doesn't look like there's a transformer in there actually. You can see the high voltage side over here and the low voltage side on this side here and there's a clear separation in between so it's not too bad actually. You can see a heat sink over there. Oh, there's actually a transformer in there, it's a small one. I can see a capacitor in there, 400 volts. So this is for the high voltage side. All good. It's not too bad. I like to put a fan in there. That is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm not going to touch anything here, it was just connected to the grid. So it is now 10 o'clock in the night and we've got minus 250.7 ampere hours. I'll leave the new charger running overnight now and see how much ampere hours it charges in until tomorrow, well, about 6.30 or so. Nice! It all has worked out. Charger is still charging, it's only hand warm. And we can see the solar charge controller is already pumping 3.5 amps into the battery as well. So they are adding up now. They can work in parallel. If we have a look at the BMS, it looks like this. So we can see 7.3 amps coming in. Half solar charge controller, half from the grid charger. And all the battery cells are over to uh, 3.25 volts. Easy. 7, 6, 8 are the lowest. <laughs> 24 millivolt deviation. 3.3 this one has already. Wow. Okay. Well, a bit of a problem with the car because I've got only 106 kilometers in the battery. And I haven't charged the car from grid power at all the whole week. I have only used our battery here and what came from the solar power. I charged it to 65% on Sunday during the day when the sun was shining and this was my last time um, I was that high. And then I commuted and yesterday I had to drive to a customer to pick up a computer and well used more battery than expected and now I'm down to 30% uh, or so. Well it should be still fine because I use only 30 kilometers now to commute. Um, but then we will be down to 20% or so and then tomorrow when the sun is out I need to recharge the car immediately yeah I I don't have enough solar power to charge this battery up enough to actually charge the vehicle it's not enough but so far yeah this one is working fine I'm pleased with that and um, everything else is working as expected apart from six seven and eight Okay, I will turn off my emergency charger right now and switch to solar only. There we go. It's working well for $35. So this morning we are at minus 214 ampere hours. And um, we started with minus 250 last night when I turned on the grid charger. So it has recharged about 35 ampere hours in eight and a half, in nine hours. So 35 ampere hours in nine hours charging time. Not much, but as an emergency charger, it's great. Mm -hmm. 